Alright guys, so this is um, kind of something uh, if you're newer to forging. Um, something I did is I, as I put my forge, heated my forge up, I heated this bar up here. Um, what that does, and I put it on top of my anvil, what that does is that warms your anvil up. It um, helps uh, so your anvil doesn't act as a heat sink, but also your metal don't cool down as fast. But also it doesn't; it's not as hard on your anvil when you're smacking it. You know, when it's real cold, um, obviously your steel's gonna cool down a lot faster uh, if you got it a cold anvil. So I do that, I lay that on there, and I'll do that until it's warm. It's still pretty cool. I've only done it twice, but it is warming up pretty good. Um, but I'm getting ready to pull that barrel out and start spreading it. I'll spread it on here in my cutoff uh, to start. Um, I thought I'd show you this. Whoops, sorry. Kick the camera. I guess that's better than kicking the bucket. Trying not to hit way down in because I don't want to, you know, cut up into that top part. Okay, steel starts cooling down. I mean, I can still I can still smack that um, and get that opened up some more, but I want to put it back in the forge and heat it back up. But uh, always keep your cool cool your anvil clean but yeah I just thought I'd show you that little bit of the process I'll just keep showing you little clips as uh, as I go along all right later getting ready to pull that out about have it flattened out thought I'd show you something here these are these spikes um, that I was talking about maybe trying to make a knife out of but they won't um, they won't harden for me you know obviously I take the rust and everything off um, but I can't get them hardened good enough I feel for a knife um, so I thought I'd just make some letter openers and stuff out of them uh, again these are from the early uh, 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s, somewhere in there. These are what they used to use to uh, put in the flumes to float the logs down the mountain and stuff out here, um, or in Idaho. So they used these to pin stuff, pin the logs together and that. I found these. I have quite a few of them, but I found them. Found them out in the mountain. Uh, it's kind of neat. You can still see some of the old logs. They must have used cedar logs or something. You can still see some of them and pull some of these nails, big spikes out of it. But I thought what I might do is cut some down, twist the handle, and then make a blade out of it. Uh, and harden it to whatever temperature or whatever hardness I can get it out of out of it and then um, make like a letter opener or something out of them but it's kind of cool you can see how they were pounded it's really neat neat stuff hopefully you can see that okay but yeah so I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet like I said I got to clean them up good 
but probably make letter openers out of them stuff so I'm gonna pull this out and flatten it out the rest of the way the barrel You can kind of see, well, maybe not, uh, some of the rifling and stuff in there. But that's that's where I start, kind of um, with that. Like I said, I'll show you things through it, and then that's what we're somewhat ending up with. This I got to clean up good yet. But uh, that's that there, or this here was once that there, so it's kind of cool. But yeah, I'm going to throw this back in the forge and uh, start beating, beating it. Um, what I do, I hammer, I stand it up on edge this way. And uh, then I start drawing it out. You just hit it down and then you together and draw it out. Um, and then just kind of starts taking shape. These knives, um, see if I can do this without making the camera jump too much. Um, anyways, these knives are just stuff that I come up with as I'm hammering. Um, I don't have a particular shape, you know, that I'm trying to duplicate. I'm, I'm just, as it comes out of my head and uh, onto the steel, that's what I, that's what I make. So, that's why I was saying it's a, it's a first come first serve type deal on these knives. Um, I Because they're not the same, they're not going to be the same. Some of them are going to have antler handles, some of them are going to have uh, the walnut and cherry. Uh, just, you know, it, as they come out, I make them. Uh, so, um, I'm very limited, like I said, on my the amount of uh, antler that I have. Um, so that's a really first come, first serve type deal. But uh, if I can get some more antler in that, I'll I'll make them. I don't know. I probably have enough to do on. Well, the ones with like the the butt end that flares out and that comes out of the head, um, those I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe maybe ten right now, and um, I hate to do it, but <laughs> I need the money so. Um, these are all deer over the years that I've shot that I'm going to be cutting the antlers off of and using. So, um, yeah. So they're from from me, stuff I've shot. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I'm going to start beating on this and uh, I'll come back and show you some stuff.